Hello, welcome to 101. I'm your host, Greg Walker. I got a really good friend as our guest on the show today. I think you're going to enjoy getting to know him much better. He worked in the walking horse industry for quite a few years as a trainer. His name is Bob Manning. We call him Bobcat. He's retired now, but we see each other regularly at what we call the Old Town Country Club. We'll tell you about that even. Hopefully you can settle back, relax, enjoy a fun, down-to-earth conversation with a really good friend of mine. We've had a lot of laughs and a lot of good times over the years. Settle back, relax. Bob Manning, Bobcat, joins us right after these words. It's the 2017 model year-end event. Thank you for voting Matthews Nissan Clarksville's favorite new car dealer. You're going to love our selection. Save big. This new Altima for $16,977 or this new Versa automatic and air for only $10,977. $6,377 off the MSRP on a new Rogue. Unbelievable. You're going to love our prices. MatthewsNissan.com. You're going to love our prices. Matthews. The Leaf Chronicle is now available on every device you carry or don't carry. All things Clarksville in all media, 24 seven. Subscribe now for full access. years, Neil Tarpley Parchment Funeral Home has celebrated legacies with services as unique as each life. Neil Tarpley Parchment, people who care, a name you can trust. Welcome to our show today, the one and only, Bob Manning. The Bobcat, he's in the house. Great to have you, man. Good to be here. Good to be here. You wore my favorite cap today, well, didn't you? Uh huh. Hey. Yeah, you like it. I love that cap, man. You look good in that cap. Well, I appreciate it. You know, you look like you're ready to train some horses. Today. I wish I could. Boy. I wish I could. I, have, I mean, you've had uh, health. Your life. health. Your health is what really yeah, got you. Yeah, I just, I just can't do it anymore. If you got your cane with yeah. you, show that cane. What about this? This is one of the greatest canes. <laughs> Look at that hammer. That's perfect for you. Yeah. You have yeah. to beat the women off of that. I have more compliments about that. <laughs> I guarantee you do. Yeah. I wish I didn't have to use it, but I got to. You had a lot of surgeries on your legs. Oh, okay. You? Well, I had open heart surgery to start with. Yeah. And then uh, surgery on my legs. And I've just had all kinds of problems. You have had. But I'm glad to be here, you know. Oh, man, glad to have you here. Matter of fact, they had you in the nursing home for, what, five months? Five, five and, and a half. half. Said you'd never either get out or never walk again. If I did I, if I if did get out, I'd be in a wheelchair the rest of my life. I told them they didn't know who they was talking to. They didn't to. know about the cat. No, uh-uh, uh-uh. You know, a lot of people don't know, I coached Bobcat. When, what were you, nine or ten years old, maybe? Something like that. In Little League Baseball with the Yankees when he was in the minor leagues. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you one thing. Best coach I ever had. Bless your heart. We'd drag bunch you at least once a game, wouldn't we? Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. You had that drag bunt yeah, down. Yeah, that was my specialty. On right that there. left side? Uh-huh. It could drag bunt, Yeah, it? yeah. Bobcat played first base, you know, and uh, how long did you train Tennessee Walkers? Well, I I grew up around horses. Yeah, grew, grew how did up. it start? Well, we always had horses. Daddy did. Yeah. Field trial. And your father was? John Manning. Yeah, on John. On organ ready mix. Yeah, and your wife is Melissa. Melissa, uh -huh. You know. Y'all still live out there? On the farm. On the farm. Uh -huh. You've got some acres on the farm. Yeah. Uh -huh. it's, I hadn't got any horses down. Like I say, I can't ride them. And, you know, 
I just can't, you know, if yeah. one of them was to turn wrong or something, I just, you know. But I did ride a few. I went to Chevrolet for the celebration and went to a guy, a friend of mine's bar on the trains and rode four or five and really enjoyed it. Really, yeah. I really miss it. Now you start out, your, your, you had horses growing up. Oh, yeah. Then got into walking horse business, trained <clears> it myself from about the ninth grade on, and I worked for Charlie Massey when he had that stable in St. Bethlehem. Boy, oh, that was a... I, I, I started work summer my sixth grade and would work there every summer, every snow day that we was out of school, I was out there. Uh -huh. And uh, then I got out of it when I graduated from uh, high school, went to work for my daddy at the concrete Concrete plant. company. I, I just didn't care, you know, I didn't care for that that much. You, you wasn't into the no, ready mix business, no, were you? I missed the horses, so I went back to training for a guy, great guy, uh, considered one of the best horse trainers it is, uh, Ramsey Bulletin in Franklin, Tennessee. Who? Ramsey Bulletin. He's originally from Virginia. Uh -huh. But he's, he's considered one of the best. I worked for him about 16 years. Best time of my life. Best time of your life, uh -huh. wasn't it? Enjoyed it. We were lucky and fortunate enough. We had, I'd say, average five or six world champions, and three or four world grand champions every year. So I worked for a good trainer. You, were, like, you were his assistant? Yeah, uh-huh. You were his assistant right. for those years. I worked mostly amateur horses that the owners would show. Uh -huh. I showed growing up, but when I went to work for him, people could ride after me good. Uh, so I trained mostly amateur horses. Right. You know, the, horse, the Tennessee walking horse industry has really taken a big hit. Oh, it has. It's, it's had. It and breaks I, your heart, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. I'll be the first to admit something had to be done. It got sure enough bad in the 60s and early 70s, and the government got involved, which I, like I say, I agree, they needed to, but they just went too far. They just about ruined the business. It's nothing like it used to be. You know, if the government gets involved in anything like that, it seems like they go too far and ruin by That's anything. right. At the celebration, which is like the Super Bowl a celebration, walk, the walking horses. Horse. I believe that place has set about 32, 33,000, and it used to be. This is in Shelbyville, Tennessee, this takes place, yeah. folks, if you didn't know. The end of August is 10 days. It's always to wear the last Saturday night, the first Saturday of September. And, uh, like I say, used to, you couldn't get a seat there. It'd be 32, 33,000. Now it's doing good to have 17,000. And you go every year? I've been yeah. every year. Well, 1965 was my first year. Right. And up until health reasons, I didn't go for about four or five years. I didn't go this past year because of health reasons. But, uh, I started back and was fortunate enough to be able to go. I couldn't walk much. You watched it on TV? Though. Yeah, this year. This I year did. you did. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Made me miss it more. Yeah. Uh, but the past three or four years, I, you know, I went. I couldn't get around good, but, you know, went. It stays in your blood once it gets in there. Yeah. Y'all used to go and just stay the whole week. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, of course, when I was training, uh, we'd go drive, you know, every night from Franklin to Chevrolet and back because Ramsey was a workaholic there. When we got in from the horse show at night, the horses we were showing the next night, we'd work them just a little uh -huh. to see, you know, how they were. So, yeah. what much sleep at 10, ten days. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, but I really enjoyed it. Yeah, you did. You really didn't care. You you were a workaholic with it also. Well, yeah, I guess you, yeah. All right. Why did the government get into the walking horse industry to begin with? The soaring. <clears throat> they call it soaring. Now, everybody that doesn't know what soaring is, explain it. 
it's using a chemical that you put on the horse's feet to make them lift their feet higher and everything. Uh, but you don't have to do it. I'm fortunate enough to say the uh, years, 16, 17 years I worked for Ramsey, we never got a ticket, was never rolled up for any kind of violation. Right. And not many trainers can say that right. at all. I don't know if any other trainer can say that. Y'all went by the book. By the book. You got your trainers that are so-called trainers <laughs> that that really don't know, can't, you know, you got to get along with the horse. The horse got to understand you as much as you understand the horse. And your so-called trainers are just not trainers. They're going to take shortcuts. Right. Soaring is a shortcut. Right. Then you got your new guys, younger guys coming in. They want to get as many horses as they get because that's more money. You know, you talk about six, seven hundred dollars a month, eight hundred on a per horse. So they want as many as they can get. Uh -huh. It's more money. To, to now, train. Yeah. Now Ramsey wasn't like that. He wanted, he cut back on the horses where we had, where the younger trainers put in about 15 minutes per horse. We average probably two hours per horse. Really? I mean, that's what it takes. Yeah. That's what it takes. To be a champion yeah, the Yeah, you can't take any shortcuts. And the soaring was a shortcut. The soaring, this chemical they put on there, it was hook. It make them. Yeah, you know, pick your feet up. And, I uh, thought it was chains. Well, or something. you use chains. You used to use boots, what they call boots. boots. They'd have ropes in them. Uh, ball bearings or something. Now, the most you can use is a six ounce chain, that's which to a fifteen hundred pound horse. That's nothing. No, that's like a farmer working all day to fill with a watch on or a lady wearing red. Right. right. And you, we use the pads, built up pads, which is like a woman. A horse gets used to it after having it on for you, you know, a few right. days. That's just like a woman wearing high heel shoes. Uh -huh. And it's been studies done by UT, Auburn University, and I think it was the University of Colorado that did a study. It said there's no way that the six ounce chain and pad hurt the horse at all. But see, the government now talk trying to get that outlawed. The chain, if they do that, it will be no more performance horses, show horses. You'll have your pleasure horses. You mean there won't? Well, there won't be any more Tennessee well, not if I, Not if they outlaw the uh, built-up shoes and the chain. Well, they'll run the industry. Oh yeah, it won't be. They've just about done it now, and it used to be the walking horse industry was one of the biggest income for Tennessee. You know, uh -huh. uh, and now, you know, it's not, especially Middle Tennessee. Uh, right. Of course, Chevrolet, Tennessee is the capital of the walking horse sure. industry. And, you know, Tennessee is losing so much money because of it. it used to be in its heyday, you couldn't get a room in Chevrolet, Murfreesboro, Manchester, anywhere close to Chevrolet unless you've been going for years and years and had the same, same people that lived. Sort of in, like so. the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, uh -huh, exactly. You know, you had to have them booked years in advance. That's right. That's right. People in Chevrolet that lived there that didn't have anything to do with walking horses, which is not a whole lot. Most of them do have something to do with it. Uh, they'd rent their whole house out right. for them 10 days. Right. Bob Manning, Bobcat. Talking a little about the Tennessee walking horse industry. We're going to talk about other things as well. Back with the cat right after this.
The Leaf Chronicle is now available on every device you carry. Or don't carry. All things Clarksville, in all media, 24-7. Subscribe now for full access. Welcome back. Our guest today is Bob Manning. Call him the Bobcat. Cat Daddy. We've had some good times over the years. Boy, good our time. days over at Cambridge Square. Oh. Those 70s and 80s. Never be enough. <laughs> <laughs> we had some good times. We have had Great had. times. We hadn't ever played any poker together. Oh, though. no. Uh, 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 that was a Friday night. Delight. Yeah, that's it? right. Friday great night. friends and a great poker game. Yeah, we'd have them too, wouldn't we? Yeah. They had some good poker That's games. right. That's right. Where'd you get the name Bobcat? Well, you probably had something to do with it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Little League Baseball, my two older brothers played, and I was running around there wilder than a Wildcat, I guess you could say, and I was a bat boy for the Yankees. My daddy was Soapy Haynes' assistant. Uh huh. So I just got nicknamed the Bobcat from Little League Baseball. You got to play for Soapy, didn't you? Soapy Haynes. After you went to the majors, I had the minor Yankees because mm -hmm. Barry, my brother, was That's playing. That's right. I had coached with Dick Holt and the yeah. Indians uh -huh. prior to that. But Soapy did some trading to get Barry and uh, Rob Dirt. That's right. Yeah. Uh, wheeling and dealing. And that's when I started coaching the minors uh -huh. with Bobcat. We played behind more school. Little sports field. Yeah. Little sports that's field. That's right. What was playing for Soapy like? Great. Beating, you couldn't beat him. He was something. He wasn't was it? something. He, he was, was something, something else. And like I say, my daddy was his assistant which Daddy thought the world of them, which everybody did, ever knew them. Yeah, how did you not like so? That's right. You know, how did you not? You're a music lover. Yes. You know, this guy turned me on, I guess it was in the early 80s or late 70s. I'd say the late 70s, yeah. probably. To a band called Marshall Tucker. And buddy, you did me right there. They got the, they good. Yeah. You know, they want your hard rock and roll. Oh, but they're just good. Oh yeah, somebody you can listen to all night long. Yes, sir. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. man. I they had a song, "Desert Skies." I named a horse I had after that. He was really? a wrong horse, uh -huh. you know. And uh, I named him. Luckily, what another horse re already registered "Desert Skies." So that's what yeah, I You have to get lucky now with oh, that, yeah. don't you? You can't have a horse. You don't rest a horse the, na the name you want if it's already a horse registered. And you know, do you like, have to have so many, you can only have so many letters? Is that right? Yeah, they. Or is that just in the race horses? Well, no, it used to be in the walking horses, but they sort of loosened up on it now because I. I don't know how many is registered every year, so you know. Yeah. Sooner or later, the names are going, you know, run out. And the past ten years, I'd say, the, I'd say seventy-five percent of your horses are registered after, named after athletes. You got a Peyton Manning. Really. Yeah, Johnny Majors. Really. I mean, yeah, or one just to coach, and. It's a lot of them named after sports figures or movie stars. Now, this is a serious question because, you know, they always say we see athletes today. We know they're bigger, they're stronger, they're faster. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think they're as tough as, say, they used to be. Yeah. But they are bigger, stronger, and faster, oh, yeah. but not as tough. That's my opinion. Walking horse industry. Are the champions today as good as the champions back when you were training with Ramsey? When I was training for Ramsey, mm -hmm. now when I was training for Ramsey would have been the, I started the mid '80s and probably finished up the early 2000s. 
And after all the changes the government made about the soaring and the uses of boots and chains, the horses are 100% better these days. Are they? Uh, and when I worked for Ramsey, the horses that got the government involved back in the 60s, I was looking at some tapes of them on the internet, and it really surprised me to see how much better the horses are these days cleaned up, you know, taken uh, care of. You know, with the owners the way they are, the horses are taken better care of than a lot of the family members. It, we, but you just don't see as many ho wa walking no, horses in there, do you? No, used to in the championship class at the celebration. It'd be anywhere from 10 to 20, you know. You got to qualify. Right. I think this past year, it was six in the Grand Championship. Really? And it got down to where a couple of years it was just four. I mean, yeah, four. And it's the government, you know, they really cracked down championship night. And the trainers don't want to have to go through what you got to go through. You tell you had fun. It was a business, but you had fun doing it. Right. And it just got to where it's not any fun. You and know? you hear this when you go, you hear this from everybody. Yes. You know. What are they going to do? Well, if they outlaw, ban the chains, built up shoes, like I was talking about, the walking horse industry, you got two class, uh, classified the pleasure horses and your, they, what they call the big lick. That's show horses. It won't be any big lick show horses. It'd be your pleasure horses, which are show horses too. Yeah. But you won't have your big lick. Like, like the major league. That's right. That's right. What a shame. That's right. That's right, because they're beautiful animals. They are beautiful. And a walking horse, in my opinion, is one of the gentlest, easiest going horses it is. Really? For kids to ride. Well, you got classes for uh, any horse show, not just a celebration. Juvenile riders, 11 years old and under. Amateur, 80 years old and over. Uh -huh. So you got there. They're good for all ages. Right. Uh -huh. And you don't see too many horse breeds like that. How smart are Tennessee walkers compared to thoroughbreds and other horses? <coughs> I... Well, you know, I've never really had a whole lot of dealings with other horses. Right. So it'd be hard for me to say. Uh, well, how smart are these They're horses? smart. I mean, you know, they're real smart. Uh, easy to get along with. They learn quick. Do you get attached to them? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what I thought. What, what one horse uh, did you become the most attached to? Vigor. Vigor? Was his name? V I G O R. A doctor? Well, she wasn't a doctor to start with, but she'd always wanted a world championship. She'd been second at the celebration a bunch of years. And that was her goal to win a blue ribbon. And I trained it when I was at Ramsey, and we won the Amateur Lady Riders preliminary class and was second in the championship class. Bob Manning, stretch run right after this. It's the 2017 Model Year End Event. Thank you for voting Matthews Nissan Clarksville's favorite new car dealer. You're going to love our selection. Save big. This new Altima for $16,977 or this new Versa Automatic and Air for only $10,977. $6,377 off the MSRP on a new Rogue. Unbelievable. You're going to love our prices. MatthewsNissan.com. You're going to love our prices. Matthews.
For a hundred years, Neil Tarpley Parchman Funeral Home has honored legacies. We believe every family deserves a special time of celebrating a life well lived. Neil Tarpy Parchman, people who care, a name you can trust. Stretch run, we've only got two and a half minutes. It's been a lot of fun. And I'm gonna tell you, you can see just how much he loves the walking horse industry. And uh, you know, it's a lot of people out there that have loved it over the years. It's a shame that that industry has gone down it like is. it has. Gotta ask you though, Bob, uh, What's the best advice the cat's ever received? Just to be myself. You know, don't try to be somebody I'm not. Just be myself. And treat people the way I like to be treated. You can never go wrong with that. And you do that. Well, I try to. You do. And we do that. Hey, that's what you meet down at the... Uh, that's what we meet at the That's Old right. Town Country Club. That's right. It's like family down there. It is, isn't it? You know, Carl Edwards, uh -huh. Nikki, and you, and you know, That's all the gang that stops That's by. That's right. You say, the, what is the Old Town Country Club? Well, you know, it's been the Busy Bee for years. There's other names attached to it, but uh, we just enjoy going down there and having coffee or breakfast. That's and right. Shooting the bull, don't we? It's a good place. It is a good place. Uh, what is your favorite thing to do now, Cat, that you're not training horses or whatever? Well, it's not a whole lot I can do on my legs. I, I used to buy daddy raised cattle until he passed away. I loved and enjoyed that, but I couldn't do that. We had to sell all of the cows because you know, they could knock me down in a heartbeat. You used to go to field trials. A yes, lot, uh -huh. too, I used to go to field, you know, train bird dogs. I know, too. you uh -huh. did that. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. And horses was part of it, you yeah. know. You got a great story on a bird dog. We hadn't got time to go over it. I wish well, you had Well, maybe you'll have me again. I will have okay. you again. What characteristic do you admire most in a person? Uh. Shake my hand while you think about it. I, Somebody that's real? Yeah, you know, a real person. I don't want anybody, I don't care for anybody that's fake, you uh, know, that's phone? trying to impress. Amen, brother. You know, I want somebody to be who they are. Bob Manning, Melissa's his wife. Good folks. He's one of my best. Thanks for Steve Sawyer behind the scenes. Great to have the cat daddy on for this truly Greg Walker. Till next time, have a nice rest of the day, folks.